Okay. Exactly. All right, guys, the first thing that you'll notice when you come to one of my seminars, whether it's here, wherever we do them, we do them all over the place, I don't pack in a ton of fishing gear, okay? Some guys come in with a bunch of rods and a bunch of gear, and that's all fine and dandy, okay? What I try to do with people, because you don't get enough of this when you go to a seminar, what I try to get my people to understand is to understand the fish, okay? We fish for multiple species. It doesn't matter what it is, if it's out in the ocean or if it's in, in the inland lakes or rivers, we fish for it. And the reason why we've had success is one, obviously, the experience, the angler's experience. It's my experience being shared to you, okay? Fishing is about being on the water and learning from what you've caught or what you've fished or how you've done it, okay? That's your experience, okay? I'm able to have more experiences than you are because I do it for a living. But I want to convey those to you so you go catch fish, all right? So what you have to understand is, is to become successful at catching a bass, a walleye, or a pike, or anything, is you've got to understand the fish, okay? I got a tackle store, I can go in there and grab anything out of there, guys, at a certain time and catch a fish with it. Okay, I got 144 tackle boxes in my boat. Anything in there at any given time can catch a fish. You can go catch a walleye on a six inch bass lizard dragging it on a jig head. It can happen, okay? If you understand the fish, understand a little bit of the biology about it, why it wants to be where it's at, you'll become a better angler, okay? It's about understanding the fish. I always have this, and I want to see a raise of hands. When somebody tells you, hey, I went and caught a big fish, what's the first question you ask? What were you using? Raise a hand. How many people do that? What were you using? Okay. The absolute worst question you can ask. This is the reason why. What, what I want you to do is I want you to say, hey, that's awesome fish, you know, great, whatever. Be nice about it. And say, hey, you know, how deep were you fishing? You know, was uh, it sunny out? Was it windy? Was it cloudy? What was the water temperature? What was the water clarity? Find those things out. That's what's important to you because that tells you where the fish are going to be located at. Okay, they were on a flat or they were off a steep break. Okay, you can go out, guys. I could tell you right now that I went out walleye fishing this afternoon and I caught them dragging a goby and we just slayed them. You can go out there tomorrow when the wind's blowing and a cold front's coming in. You go out and drag a goby and it doesn't work. Or you pick up a blade and it starts working. Okay? But because I told you that I caught that big fish dragging that goby, you're going to go out there and drag it till it's dead. Okay? It changes. Everything throughout the day changes. I don't care what the situation is. When I talk about fish, guys, and I've heard people say, well, you know, a fish got a, size, a brain the size of a pea and you overthink it. And yes, guys will overthink it. Okay? But if you take these things that I'm going to explain to you, and you look, I look at fish like I look at people. Okay? And I'm going to show these correlations as we're going through it. If you think about it like that, it's going to make a lot more sense to you. And you're going to understand why they do the things they do. Okay? Let's start out about, a little bit about the basics of the walleye. Okay? Walleye's got a big crazy eye, right? We all know that. Walleye. Okay? Well, that big crazy eye should tell you a few things about the walleye. Some of which you'll know and some of which you probably won't. The diehard guys will know it. All right? The walleye has a very unique eye. Okay? They have a reflective layer of pigment within their eye called the tapetum lucidum, okay? It's the same thing that a house cat or a tiger or a lion has in their eye. What that tapetum lucidum does is acts like mirrors within the retina that magnifies light, which gives them optimal low light vision. Walleyes are low light feeders, okay? Low light feeders. That's why. Now, when you go to the sportsman's warehouse or UFA store now, and you look at the Northland jig section, or you look at your spinner section, or your spinner beads, do you guys notice that everything there is some form of red or green? Some shade of red or green for the most part? Have you noticed that? Okay, it's pink, it's chartreuse, it's green, okay? Here's the reason why. Within your eye, you have cones that sense color. That's what draws the picture that you see, okay? You have yellow, blue, red, and green. Walleyes lack yellow, blue which means they see everything in some shade of red or green. That's why those lures are that color. That's what they see best, red or green. Now, is that to say that if you went out with a chrome spinner and a clear bead on it that you couldn't catch fish? No, that's not it at all. They can still see flash. Understanding to run chrome, gold, or brass is important. It has to do with water clarity. Chrome, you run clear water, bright skies. Gold, you run in muddy water. Brass, you run in muddy water, low light skies, okay? 
They also feel the thump of the blade. But that's a little bit about what they see, okay? Now, how many people here think they can't catch a walleye unless they have a leech or a worm on their hook? How many people, when she said, you can't use leeches anymore, unless it's from that body of water, shrank down on your seat? How many? Raise your hands. Okay, there's a few, and there's a few that are probably closet people. Bob. Okay? Okay, guys, understand this, and I'm not in any way saying Bob is not a good fisherman, because he's a great fisherman. He does great seminars, attend his seminars, okay? But I want you to understand a little bit about the basics of the fish, all right? If you watch the angler's experience, and I'm not the greatest fisherman in the world, and I'm not the, I'm not the worst, okay? But you don't ever see me use bait, okay? You don't ever see me use bait. I just don't like to hassle with it. Does it outproduce at times? You better believe it, okay? Am I stubborn about it? Yes, I am. Do I have some pretty big fish to prove that I know what I'm doing? I got a few, okay? Understand this. The walleye has a what? Ginormous eye? Okay? Think of it like this. How many of you catch bullhead catfish? Have caught catfish before? They've got a huge eyeball, right? No. It's the size of a pin, right? But what do they got on the outside of their mouth? Whiskers. Those whiskers act as what? A nose. They've got olfactory all over their body. Okay? A fish that has a big ginormous eye like a pike or a walleye uses it, more so than this, okay? In muddy conditions, guys, and it's been proven, in muddy conditions, if it was all about scent for the walleye, a straight blade bait will outperform a crawler or a leech, okay? Because it's feeling the vibration. Okay, it's using its lateral line because its eye senses have been taken away from it because the water's muddy. Catfish use that big old nose to find that stuff. Do they have a lateral line? Yes. Is it as powerful as a walleye? No. Okay, it's about olfactory. So keep that in mind. Don't be disheartened if you can't use a worm. Okay? I'll give you an example of it. We were up in Canada, a place called Lesser Slave Lake, about 900 miles north of here. You can go catch 120, 200 walleyes a day. They're not big fish like we have down here, 24 inch or 26 inch is a big one, okay? Dad and I were out trolling spinners, using a small Colorado, getting the same size fish, 12, 14 inch fish. Found the biggest one I had and put it on. All of a sudden, the size of the fish increased, okay? More vibration, vibration bigger offering. Not keying in on the worm, keying in on the size of that thump is what upped the size of the fish. <coughs> Okay, so just understand that. Now, you talk about nighttime stuff. Okay, guys, we catch giant fish at night. I love fishing at night. It's a great time to do it, fall time and springtime, all right? Now, when you want to go out and you want to catch a big fish, all right, and everybody wants to get the fish of a lifetime. I just want to get that fish of a lifetime. You know, well, what is that? Well, it's a 14-pounder, whatever it is. Okay, some people's a 10. I don't care, all right? I always tell people, guys, there's no such thing as one fish of a lifetime. You talk to the guys that, Cruz and Bob, and the guys that have caught big fish, they catch more than just one big fish, not just a fish of a lifetime. For us, a fish of a lifetime may have been 19, 20 pounders, state record if we ever caught it. Who knows? Okay? What happens is, when you catch that fish, you mark it in your head. What happened? What were the conditions? Da, da, da. And the next year, you go and do the same thing. Guys, we catch these big walleye at, night, walleye at night. A good friend of mine turned me on to it. Been doing it now for like eight years. Guys, it's a 100-yard stretch of shoreline. And we go there, and at this time, at this moon phase, at this temperature, and we just repeat what we've done in the past, and we catch those big fish. Okay? All you're doing is reproducing the past. All right? Now, is that to say that things can be different? This year, the night walleye fishing was horrible. Worst I'd ever seen it. Okay, we got biggest fish Chad caught 15-8. Okay, usually we'll go and we'll get two or three fish, teenagers we call them. Okay, the rest of them are all smaller fish. And we're going to discuss why that's going on right now. Now, understand another thing about walleyes that's a, that's a big misnomer. You know, I always laugh because if you look at Berkeley Power Bait, they make a three-inch walleye grub. I mean, if it's a three-inch, like, what, what three-inch walleye grub? I use that for cutthroat, like on the St. Joe, on a 16-ounce jig head. You know, down at the Spokane River or something, okay? When we go out night walleye fishing, guys, we use six-inch swim baits. 
Biggest bait I've ever had a walleye on was a nine inch swim bait. Okay, weighs about six ounces. Got to cast it on a big old huge stick. Okay, they're a top of the line predator, guys. Give them credit where credit's due. They will eat big stuff. These fish are so big out here in Roosevelt because they're feeding on trout. They're feeding on rainbow trout. Understand this about the predator prey relationship. Bass, pike, walleye, I don't care what it is, guys, it's across the board. You see those big bass coming out of California? They're getting big from rainbow trout. You see big pike in the Ponderay River? They're getting big, not because of largemouth like the bass guys that are killing them. They're getting big because of whitefish. The lake trout in Priest Lake are getting big because the kokanee are coming back. Now you say, Seth, well, why is that? Okay, guys, if you throw a dried out, like my wife likes to cook, don't let her see the video, dried out chicken breast on my plate, or tink, or I go out and I grill a big old fatty steak, and those two are sitting there, which one do you think I'm eating? The big old fatty steak. Well, both of them. <laughs> Smart ass. Jeez Louise. Man. He's probably right. Okay. In your mind, if you're a meat eater carnivore like me and a majority of us are, uh, you know in your mind that that big old juicy steak has got a bunch of fat on it, right? That fat's good. I eat it all. It's juicy. The blood's running out of it. Don't get sick, ma'am. It's okay. I'm just starting this story. Okay? But you understand that that is going to taste better and, you know, that's man food, right? Than that big old ch chunky dried up chicken. It's the same thing for fish, guys. Do they look at it like that? No. Okay? A soft, thin fish. Who in here fishes for white fish and just loves to eat them? See? You love to eat them? Do you smoke them? No. Okay. Everybody says, yeah, I like them. I smoke them. I like, you can smoke a turd and it tastes good. Okay? <laughs> I hate to be gross. It's like duck hunting. It's like the old duck hunting thing, okay? You got to take the duck and you cut a big old piece of the breast off and you wrap it in bacon and you stuff it in a steak and you soak it in this overnight and then you grill it and you pull the duck out and you eat the steak. Yeah. You know, you always hear these duck tails like you got to do all this stuff to it. I just want to eat it. Nothing against you, John, if you eat them. That's cool. Some people like them. Okay. But guys, they're an oily, greasy, soft, thin fish. A rainbow trout tastes better than a white fish. It's an oily fish. How many of you in here prefer a walleye to a trout? Amen. Okay? Same here. Okay? I'm, I'm getting the human thing going. You're going to see how this comes together. Okay? Kokanee is an oily fish. Soft fin. A walleye, if you catch a big Rufus Woods trout, right, and you clean it, there's that big yellow layer of fat. You don't see that on a walleye, right? Nice, lean, white meat. Oh, it's good. A bass. A bluegill, a crappie, perch. Now they're all great eating, but you don't see that fat on them, guys. The fish know that. Okay? They don't want to eat a spiny rain unless they have to. Unless they have to. Will walleye eat perch? You better believe it. Will they take down trout? Yes, they will. Okay? It's more reward for the effort, and they realize that. The way that they understand that, guys, the way, just so you guys understand something about fish biology, real quick. You want to see a good, good read, uh, do fish pee. Put it in your computer, do fish pee. Uh, it's a question you do fish pee. That's a, something that boggled me for years. Do fish, well, I got to pee, I think. Okay? Understand this, guys. A freshwater fish, and they don't pee like we pee, okay? They release urea, which is amino acids, through the base of the gills. They, in turn, take that water in through the gills, Okay? The gills act as the water mover through as well as the oxygen, okay, that membrane in there. So they take it in as well as pee at the base of the gills, urea, amino acids. Those amino acids are what that fish smells to understand that that is a predator or that is prey. Freshwater fish are constantly urinating for this reason. If they didn't, they would explode. They would literally pop. They would become overbearing with moisture and pop. Saltwater fish urinate very little. They have to drink constantly because they would shrivel up. Okay? Has to do with salt contents in the blood. 
That's how fish track in behind a scent to understand that's something they want to eat. They smell that. Okay? So now you know fish pee. You can go home happy. Okay? <laughs> now, here's the biggest problem, guys. Here's the biggest problem. You ever, you know, you read in fishermen articles and stuff, and then I've, I read, I've got magazine subscriptions, and I just, uh, I'm enthralled by fish, period, ever since I was a kid. And you always hear things called peak times, right? Peak times? Peak times are when you're going to go, like right now, which is not as good as it should be, and we're going to explain that. Peak times are when you have the best opportunity to catch that big fish in your life, or several of them. Okay? Now, you have to understand why that peak time is. Now, you talk to the diehard guys in here, and you said, okay, all the big fish that you caught, if I looked at your pictures, you're going to be in short sleeves and a tank top or shorts. No, they're going to be like this with the clothes on, and they're freezing to death. Now, do you catch some big fish in the summer? Yes. Not as frequently as you do this time of year. Okay? Understand this is why. Right now, the fish are coming out of what they call the starvation phase. All fish go through it. Typically, it may be a month in January where they just don't feed that often. Now, what that means, guys, is that doesn't mean that they're just not eating at all. That may mean that they're eating once or twice a week, three times a week. Not every single day. All right? What's happening is when uh, your wife uh, gets pregnant, um, she eats a lot, okay? I haven't recovered yet because I supported her through pregnancy, okay? I ate with her, okay? I helped her through it. I'm good like that, okay? But what happens? She's feeding baby, right? So she's, you're just going, pickles and ice cream, what is that? You know, throwing it all down, all right? Reason is she's brooding the baby, Think about fish the same way. Just like we want to eat the steak, they want to eat the soft fin. Okay? Just like mama gets big when she's carrying baby, the female walleyes, which are your biggest in the fish species, it's, females are generally the biggest, okay? they have to now pour on the feed to support them eggs to get them processed so they need protein. Okay? They've been starving. They've used their reserve from the fall. That's what's taking place now. We're going to get to why it's not as good now, okay? But that's what takes place in the springtime, your pre-spawn. Those big fish, and guys, think of it this way, okay? In the cold water periods, understand this. I don't care if it's bass, pike, or walleye. In the cold water periods, your big fish are grouped together. In the warmer periods, summertime, they are more nomadic, okay? They're more nomadic. Now, these two guys, a few years back, got on a whole bunch of big fish, a few casts in a row, okay? Grouped together, it can happen. The night walleye thing, guys, we'll make a pass after pass after pass, and we'll talk about this. Nothing happens, and you're going, this guy's nuts. All of a sudden, the next pass through, you got three fish over 10 pounds, okay? And we're gonna talk about waiting and why, okay? But they're grouped, cold water, they're grouped, okay? So they got to feed the eggs, that's why this is a peak time. The next peak time is in the fall time, night walleyes, and we'll talk some temperatures and stuff coming up. But in the fall time, when the water temperature starts to drop below 55, 58 degrees, they turn on the feed bag, they start to chow because they know they got to put on the weight to go through that window of starvation. Okay, so that's another peak time. And we're going to get a little more detailed on that, okay?